protection. We'll be hands off. Very Eugenie Sage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please take a call on the second reading of the Resource Management Reform Bill 2012. The Green Party supports improving the Resource Management Act to ensure that decision-making processes are timely and efficient, and the Minister's goal of having robust, accountable, fair and workable legislation is one that the Green Party shares. But the problem is this bill doesn't do that, and the Green Party will continue to oppose it. Mr Speaker, when the Resource Management Bill was, had its third reading more than 20 years ago, this Parliament passed it unanimously, and that is a hallmark of robust legislation when you get that cross-party agreement. And as the Environmental Defence Society has said, it is disappointing that this bill and the Act has now become a political football because of the very different um, ideological considerations at play. Because, Mr Speaker, this bill is about the government's ideological agenda to promote development at the expense of the environment because of its shallow and short-sighted economic policy that if you make it easier for developers, whether they be irrigators, miners or property developers, then the boat will go faster, even if it's headed towards a waterfall of unsustainable development. And, Mr Speaker, this bill promotes speedy rather than well-informed sound decisions where effects are properly uh, evaluated and addressed. And one of the ways it does this is by the six-month uh, consent processing deadline. That fails to recognise the complexity of some major development applications, the value of community input, and that often it's applicants that are responsible for delays because they submit applications that are incomplete where effects aren't properly assessed. This six-month deadline will mean that council staff are forced to do a once-over-likely evaluation, that potential environmental effects will be discounted, that there will be limited time for negotiation and discussion between the applicant and submitters to reduce the uh, impacts of the development and to address submitters' concerns. And when you look at the reality rather than the rhetoric, you have to ask, what is the problem? The Ministry for the Environment's own survey showed that 95% of the 36,000 consent applications that councils considered in 2011-12 were processed on time. 94% of the consent applications weren't notified, so there was no opportunity um, for public comment. And only 1%, around 350 applications annually, are appealed to the Environment Court, and 99.9% .9 of those cases are settled without the need for an Environment Court hearing. So what is the problem that this bill is trying to fix? One of the major reasons the Green Party opposes it is because of the reduction uh, in community decision-making, um, because we believe that resource management decisions are best made by the communities affected by those decisions and because the Principal Act has a really strong commitment to public participation, which this bill undermines. And it's part of the whole tranche of uh, the government's attacks on the RMA that we're seeing in this bill, and also the uh, third tranche of the changes that will be introduced later this year. They cut right across community decision-making. They deform the RMA rather than reform it. And here we're seeing the bill removing the Council's discretion to agree or decline an applicant's request for direct referral to the Environment Court for projects above a yet-to-be-specified uh, investment threshold, which the Minister will set through regulation, with no opportunity for this Parliament uh, to consider. Direct referral erodes local decision-making. It's likely to reduce public participation because of the much greater formality of, of, uh, of environment court procedures and the greater expertise that is required to uh, participate there. Nor is it likely to be more cost effective because where you have a two-stage hearing process, a lot of the issues are resolved at that first council stage and then the issues that actually go to be considered by the court are narrowed and you get the court's focus and scrutiny on a much narrower range of issues. Now the court's going to be expected to deal with the full gamut of concerns. Now the minister claimed that the section 32 changes 
would improve the quality of the cost-benefit analysis uh, which the Act requires that councils do before they uh, put rules in a plan and which the Minister is also required to do before uh, she uh, gazettes a national environmental standard. But the Green Party believes that the variable performance um, across local authorities in their Section 32 analysis has much more to do with their capability, um, the resourcing of local authorities and their capacity and the lack of guidance from MFE than it does with the provisions of the Resource Management Act. And that's one re reason we're opposing the changes to Section 32 in Clause 69 of the Bill because the changes that are being put in there may well be beyond the capacity of some local authorities and it risks becoming uh, analysis, uh, paralysis by analysis. But one of the major reasons we're opposing the Section 32 changes is because the new criteria which require the assessment of opportunities for economic growth and employment bias the evaluation of new measures which have quantifiable economic benefits and uh, in favour of that and against those which benefit the environment um, and ecosystem health. And so this new, um, these new criteria risk obstructing councils which want to regulate land and water use to promote sustainable management. And the government is making it much harder for councils to regulate because it didn't like the decision the Environment Court handed out on Fish and Games appeal on the one plan in the Manawatu, where the Environment Court upheld the need for rules to control land use and nutrient leased leaching. So by requiring councils to consider the effects on economic growth and employment, it will make it much more uh, difficult for councils to actually put rules in place to control um, the use of land and water. So short-term thinking uh, will prevail. And the Minister in her speech talked about uncertain outcomes. But this bill and the proposed third tra tranche of changes where the Minister proposes to uh, gut part two of the Act is all about making it much more certain that the environment will suffer that community input will be reduced and that poorly conceived development projects will get rubber stamped. The changes are about certainty for applicants, not the environment. And one of the worst examples of this in the bill is the tree um, provisions. And I'd like to acknowledge and uh, pay tribute to the more than 234 individuals and organisations who made submissions. The majority of those submissions were on the bill's attack on the protection of urban trees. And the bill is about making it much harder for councils to protect and control the loss of urban trees because it effectively allows landowners to trim or fell any urban trees with no need for a resource consent unless the trees are individually described and their location is either um, identified by a street address or by a legal description. So it overturns a 2010 decision by the Environment Court which upheld Council's ability under the 2009 Bill um, to have general plan rules which required a resource consent to fell or trim uh, classes of trees like coastal pahutakawa or trees above a certain height or girth. So it's all about private property rights winning out and property developers being able to um, fell and cut trees and landowners doing that as well. So many submitters, Mr Speaker, including the Tree Council, Auckland Council, the Environmental Defence Society, strongly oppose the Bill's ban on general tree protection rules and the changes to uh, Section 76 of the Principal Act. Certainly the Select Committee has made some changes, but they are still a major attract, attack on tree protection. The submitters told us that trees create a livable city and are a community asset, not just an individual property right. They highlighted the loss of mature and amenity trees which would result from the change, especially in Auckland given current development pressures. And they said that these changes would be costly, impractical, impractical onerous and unworkable and involve huge amounts of time and resources given um, the work that the council would have to do to legally identify every single tree or group of trees that it wanted to schedule in the plan. The Green Party agrees with those objections and opposes these provisions. 
We certainly support a combined plan for Auckland, but we totally oppose the fact that the Ministers of Environment and Conservation will be appointing the hearing panel rather than Auckland Council, who are elected by Aucklanders. Honourable Phil Heatley. Speaker, I rise in support of the Resource Management Reform Bill. Uh,